the bad guys. I'll be honest, I have never read any of the original books by Aaron Blabby. From what I've researched, they generally tell the don't judge a book by its cover stories, figuratively speaking of course, where these frightening looking anthropomorphic animals try to do their best to commit good acts. Other than that, there's not a lot that I know about this book series, and the same can be said about the movie before I went to see it, other than the fact that it's from DreamWorks Animation. Now, I know that DreamWorks is at a current point where they have debatably passed their prime. Like, the name alone doesn't excite people to check out their movies like they used to, especially when the content they put out nowadays are on the levels of, well, mediocre. However, the bad guys are making some heads turn where this has a chance to stand out more than stuff like Trolls or The Croods, and the fact that it's based on a kids book series could be a positive sign of promise. I mention this because some of DreamWorks' greatest works are actually when they adapt a children's book. They don't work all the time, but that was how Shrek became a phenomenon, how How to Train Your Dragon turned into an epic trilogy, and how Captain Underpants got an underrated gem. If the bad guys can go down that similar path, then they may have something truly special in their hands. So now that these criminals are caught on the big screen, will this movie feel like a good deed done by the people at DreamWorks? Or will the word bad in the title be a clue to the quality? Let's find out. The Story There is quite the dilemma going on with the bad guys. As they try to pull off the biggest heist the city has ever seen, they also try to pretend to be good in order to get out of trouble. Yet one seems to secretly want to unironically be a good guy. Now I know that some may think that this is going straight into the Wreck-It Ralph, Despicable Me, or Megamind direction, but this is not the case at all. It does stay in its own lane to keep itself as a heist movie, filled with car chase scenes, elaborate plans, and the suspense of close calls when things might go wrong. If anything, it certainly does its job to honor the genre and use its assets to make itself as engaging as it can be. Oh, pardon me. Oh. Terribly sorry. Not a problem, sir. Keep your eyes open, boys. They could be anywhere. But that's not the dilemma that I'm talking about. There is something much more problematic that the gang has to deal with that no amount of schemes or bypassing could solve. In lack of a better word, the script is honestly... bad. My biggest problem with the feature is that the writing is disappointingly weak delivering a story that is completely predictable from beginning to end. I'll give it that it does try to be a unique plot that delivers a message of what it means to be good and doing the right thing, but every concept that it presents is so cliched that it makes it very easy to guess what the outcome will end up being. From the fate of the bad guys and their status of how they are perceived, to how their friendship will go across the movie, to how the heist will end up, to who the twist villain turns out to be. As I was watching the film, I spent the whole time pointing out what the result will be with every new concept they introduce, and I managed to get them right every time. I know that sounds like a dick move for me to make, and just to clarify, I was only doing it to myself, but I can assure you that I was not having fun doing so, and it was less satisfying to get them correct. As a result, it takes away a lot of the enjoyability of the picture, where it feels like the movie wants to always take the lazy route with its plot, and cause the storytelling to seem like it's just presenting another generic family film. Well, this just got a little weird. However, while the writing comes off as unfortunately weak, everyone else working on the film has to give it their all in order to make the most out of the script. This is especially the case for director Pierre Perifel, who led the way to turn the story into something that is as entertaining as it can be, and make sure every element is used at their full potential. Thankfully, that's why the execution does help a lot to make this feel worthwhile with the characters delivering a lot of charm and a lot of heart, the comedy continuously gives out a real good laugh, 
and supplying a good portion of action scenes to give this a fun-filled fast pace throughout. Although I will say that with the latter that there may be a catch where everything is going by so fast that it makes the movie itself feel like it goes by quickly. The running time is technically 100 minutes long, but it certainly feels a lot quicker at the speed it went. There is a lot of good effort that was put into this, and I won't deny that this is a fun movie. It's just that it feels like everyone's job on the film was to pick up the slack left by a disappointingly weak story. The Animation In terms of its animation, The Bad Guys is an example of the technological impact of Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. I know that many have been making that comparison, but I say this not really because they both share a similar style, but because, well, that's what actually happened. When the team at DreamWorks watched that film in late 2018, it inspired them to go beyond the realms of what they were doing with films like Trolls and The Boss Baby in order to try something new, something more experimental and take risks to get out of their comfort zone to create a look that is unlike any other DreamWorks animation film. The result that the team conjured up is something that is more reminiscent to anime. In a way, considering how they were released close to each other, it's kind of like how Pixar animated Turning Red. Except with the bad guys, their style sticks closer to the tone of something like Lupin the Third. The animation is a lot more dynamic, and like I said before, it has a continuous fast pace that's actually beneficial for the visuals. The designs are a lot more round to give everyone, including the bad guys themselves, a more approachable and cuter look and it is a little more simplified to have some extra room for the animators to be a lot more playful with the expressions and the poses. And with the addition of the fast pace, it really helps out the tones it tries to establish, complementing the comedy to be more exaggerated so that the jokes can get a bigger laugh, and the action to keep the intensity high and the mood exciting to see the guys pull off their plans. I also want to add that the movie also takes advantage of the fact that the main characters are animals. Of course, they use their abilities to get the heist done like Miss Tarantula's legs for hacking, Mr. Snake stealthily slithering around, and Mr. Piranha's bite-sized manic energy, but they are also used for more subtle elements to play a part in their character, like how Mr. Wolf's body reacts whenever he does something that is actually good. <sighs> but what about the part that was based on Spider-Verse? How did that influence this movie's visuals? Well, on top of the CG animation already created, there is an extra filter on top to have the textures be smoother and for the colors to pop out more. It does sacrifice a little bit of detail, like how Wolf's fur is not prominently everywhere, but it does emphasize the style to make it feel more like a cartoon, and almost give it the illusion of 2D cell animation. I'm not saying that it's trying to be 2D, but it complements very well with the designs that they have. I want you to set this up so obvious. I want you to save it. Oh, right, right. Here <laughs> I think it's safe to say that the biggest appeal of the movie is the uniquely stylized animation, and I can guarantee that it delivers on what people hope for. The Characters In the immortal words of Zangief from Wreck-It Ralph, And I say Zangief, you are bad guy, but this does not mean you're bad guy. And that's exactly the case with these bad guys. While their name states that they are bad, they are anything but as characters. Each of them really make the most out of their personalities and their role in the heist that they commit. On top of that, the bond that they have with one another also gives the picture an extra layer that is surprisingly heartfelt. Yes, as tiringly cliched as it can be for a family film, there is a genuine sense that they do care for one another, and even with all the riches that they stole over the years, what matters the most to them is their friendship, especially the bond between Wolf and Snake. In a way, a 
big part that makes this engaging is not the heists themselves, but rather the fate of the team and how the image of being good serves as an obstacle to their relationship. Maybe I don't want to be a, what? a bad guy. No, no, no! We'll always be bad guys! I also want to add that a major reason to the character's likability is the acting, where almost every actor made the most out of their respective personalities to give them and the movie a lot of charm. Not to mention having comedians like Craig Robinson, Aquafina, and Alex Borstein help out to make the comedy as funny as it can be. And this is one of those films that can really make you laugh when it wants to. Shark, we need a distraction. Do I get to improvise? Fine, please be subtle. I'm having a baby! But with that said, let's get on to who these bad guys are. Starting off with Mr. Wolf, He's the leader and the brains of the bad guys, but also the one with the most prominent weakness of the team who got a taste of being good and secretly craves for more. As much as he may have a sharp wit and a knack for pickpocketing, he's the one who is faced with the moral dilemma if he'd rather want to be a good guy or a bad guy. In his team, there's his best friend, Mr. Snake, the cynical safecracker who embraces the most to being bad, Mr. Shark, the master of disguise who has the funniest scenes in the movie, Miss Tarantula, the tech expert who can hack her way through any security system, and Mr. Piranha, the craziest member who could take down anyone in his way. As they go around in their criminal capades, they're always chased by Misty Luggins, the Zenigata of the film as the hot-headed chief of police who made it her life goal to capture and forever lock up the bad guys. As for the people who help the guys to be good, there's Professor Marmalade, the ideal good Samaritan who has all the resources to have the public like them, and Diane Foxington, the new governor that has faith in the bad guys to do the right thing. I think the latter is a little sloppy when she revealed her true motives with the team, but I can let that slide because Zazie Beats did provide a really good performance. Don't do it for them, do it for you. This is a chance to write your own story, to find a better life for you and your friends. Also, as I mentioned before, there is a twist villain in the picture, and I am not exaggerating when I say that they are honestly one of, if not the worst twist villain in an animated feature. Right when the character first shows up, it's obvious that they'll be the antagonist that the bad guys have to stop. The film makes it so apparent that it's them that it almost feels like a parody, yet the movie always takes it seriously as if they're trying to be clever. I'm not gonna lie, they actually make Evelyn Dever from Incredibles 2 look decent and effective by comparison. But then again, that's just one character that is plagued by the bad writing. Everyone else was able to admirably carry the film in a fun and engaging direction so that the audience can get on board with a charismatic, touching, hilarious, and unforgettable cast. I wouldn't consider this among one of the best animated movies in recent years, but I agree that this is still DreamWorks' best movie in a long time. The Bad Guys is a fun-filled animated feature where the elements that they got right are some of the best works that we've recently seen from the studio. While it does suffer from a bad script that offers a predictably weak story and an embarrassingly awful twist villain, it more than makes up for it with gorgeously stylized animation, engaging action scenes, honors the heist genre very well, great comedy, a surprisingly touching heart, and really likable characters that provide some top quality voice acting. Don't come in expecting this to be the next Spider-Verse, but I highly recommend checking this one out if you're in the mood for something energetic and exciting. I know it's not a perfect film, and I'd lie if I say that I didn't feel disappointed by its shortcomings, but that still didn't change that what it did well, it did it amazingly, and I still say that the bad guys is, well, good. Yeah, 
We may be bad, but we're so good at it. 